So in this video, I want to talk about leaving group stability. So what are leaving groups? Well, if we have this compound, this chlorine can act as a leaving group. And when it acts as a leaving group, we break this bond. And when we break this bond, these electrons fall on this chlorine, forming this chloride leaving group. And that's why it's called a leaving group. That's why this guy's called a leaving group, because it leaves. And now we're left with these two products. However, something really important to realize is that acid and base strength is highly related to leaving group stability because the stronger the acid, the more stable the conjugate base, the more stable the leaving group. So these two concepts are intimately related. So I highly recommend you watch the previous video I did on acid base strength. I have a link of that video below. So now we may wonder which of these two is the better leaving group? Because again, they can both act as leaving groups. For example, this hydroxyl can act as a leaving group where we break this bond and then these electrons fall on the hydroxyl forming this hydroxide leaving group. So now you may wonder which of these is the better leaving group. So the way you determine which is the better leaving group is by determining which of these formed leaving groups is more stable. And the more stable the leaving group, the better the leaving group. So which of these is more stable will tell you which is the better leaving group. And it's important to realize that this is very similar to asking which of these is the stronger acid and therefore has the more stable conjugate base. For example, what happens when this guy acts as an acid? Well, we know it'll protonate something. And when it protonates something, we break these bonds and then these electrons fall on the chlorine forming this chloride conjugate base. But realize this reaction is very similar to this reaction. It's the same idea. We break a bond, these electrons fall on the chlorine forming this chloride. In this example, we break a bond, these electrons fall on this chlorine, forming this chloride. It's the similar idea, the same idea. And the same thing with this guy. When this guy acts as an acid, it protonates something, then this bond breaks, these electrons fall on this hydroxyl, forming this hydroxide. So now when determining which of these is the more stable leaving group is the exact same question as asking which of these is the more stable conjugate base. And all the principles we learned in the last video about acid and base stability and strength, all those same concepts follow. It's the exact same concepts. All those concepts we learned in the last video for determining the stability of a conjugate base are the exact same concepts we use when determining the stability of a leaving group. So these two processes are very similar. The only difference is when we have a leaving group, we essentially, this chlorine will leave an alkyl group where we break a bond, the electrons fall on the chlorine, forming this chloride. However, when we have an acid, it's the same idea, but instead of this alkyl group, we have a hydrogen, where again, we protonate something, so we break a bond, these electrons fall on the chlorine, forming this chloride. These are very analogous reactions. They're very similar. So now you may wonder which is the better leaving group. You may wonder which of these is a better leaving group, well, it's the exact same question as asking which of these is the more stable conjugate base. So how do you determine which of these is the more stable conjugate base? Well, again, in the last video we learned, you look at the pKa's of the acids, their acid forms. And we learned in the last video, the lower the pKa, the stronger the acid. So you would look in a chemistry textbook and see that this guy has a pKa of negative six, while this guy has a pKa of 14. So therefore, this guy has a lower pKa, so therefore, this guy's a stronger acid. So because it's a stronger acid, we know it forms a more stable conjugate base. And this guy's a weaker acid, so therefore, it forms a less stable conjugate base. And again, we learned this in the last video. So now we know this conjugate base is more stable than this conjugate base, so therefore, this leaving group is more stable than this leaving group, because again, it's all the exact same concepts. So again, this video is really building on the concepts we learned in the last video, so I highly recommend you watch the last video of this did not make sense. So therefore, if you're asked in an exam, which of these is the more stable leaving group? Well, there's a simple algorithm you use. When you're asked which of these is the more stable leaving group, you have to imagine them in the acid form. So instead of these alkyl groups, you imagine them in the acid form. So then you compare the acids, and again, the acid with the lower pKa is the stronger acid. So if it's a strong acid, it's gonna form a very stable conjugate base. And if the conjugate base is very stable, therefore that analogous leaving group will be stable. And it's just that simple. And again, 
If you're asked, is this a stable, does this, is this guy a stable leaving group? Well, you imagine this guy as an acid. So instead of this alkyl group, imagine it as an acid. And you look at the pKa. And if, if it has a high pKa, you know it's a weak acid. So if it's a weak acid, that means it forms a very unstable conjugate base. If it forms an unstable conjugate base, therefore, it's an unstable leaving group. So it's a bad leaving group. It's this simple algorithm. And again, all the rules we learned in the last video for determining the stability of, of a conjugate base, those exact same principles follow when determining the stability of a leaving group. It's literally identical to the chloride. These are the same thing. If this chloride is stable, it's stable. So it doesn't matter if it came from an acid or if it came from an alkyl group. If a chloride is stable, it's stable. It's the exact same principles. So let's try another example. Let's say on an exam, you're asked which of these is the better leaving group. Well, again, we know how we solve this. If you're asked this in an exam, the first step is to replace these alkyl groups with hydrogens. So therefore, imagining both of these guys as acids. Now, the next step is to look at these compounds and ask, which is the stronger acid? So we know how we do that. We compare the pKa's. And we see this hydronium has a pKa of negative 2, while water has a pKa of 14. So now we know hydronium is a stronger acid than water. So therefore, we know hydronium is going to be the stronger acid. So the stronger the acid, the more stable the conjugate base. And the more stable the conjugate base, the more stable the analogous leaving group. So now we know, we know this hydronium forms a very stable conjugate base. So therefore, replacing this hydrogen with an alkyl group, we know this leaving group will form a very stable leaving group. And again, it's all the same rules we learned in the acid base video. All the same reasons why this guy's stable is the exact same reasons why this guy's stable. And again, this is the weaker acid. So it's a weaker acid because it forms an unstable conjugate base, which forms an analogously unstable leaving group. And this is un these guys are unstable for all the same reasons, the exact same reasons we learned about in the last video. But notice something important. Realize that this guy's a bad leaving group. And this guy's a good leaving group. Because again, this guy forms a stable leaving group. This guy forms an unstable leaving group. However, we can take this bad leaving group and we can protonate it. If we protonate this hydroxyl, then we form a good leaving group. And this is actually a very important rule of thumb. When you protonate leaving groups, they become better leaving groups. And that will always be true. For example, we know this is a bad leaving group because if this guy were to act as a leaving group, we would break this bond, these electrons fall on this guy, and we form this unstable leaving group. And how do we know that this is an unstable leaving group? Well, again, remember the algorithm. When asking, is this a bad or good leaving group, replace the alkyl group with a hydrogen. And then you look at the pKa and the acidity of this acid. So this guy has a pK of 35, which is extremely high. So this is an extremely weak acid. It's a weak acid because it forms a very unstable conjugate base. So this guy's unstable for all the same reasons why this guy's unstable. So therefore, we know this guy's unstable. So therefore, it's a bad leaving group. This guy is a bad leaving group because when it acts as a leaving group, it forms an unstable leaving group. So therefore, now we know this guy's a very bad leaving group. It forms a very unstable leaving group. However, remember what we learned before. If we have a bad leaving group, we can protonate it. And if we protonate it, we create a better leaving group. So therefore, even though this guy is a very unstable leaving group, so therefore it's a bad leaving group, if we protonate this guy, if we protonate it, we form a better leaving group. So now this guy's a better leaving group. And when it acts as a leaving group, when we break this bond and these electrons fall on this nitrogen, we form a more stable leaving group. So this is a general rule of thumb that will always be true. Whenever you protonate a leaving group, it becomes a more stable leaving group. So again, the main theme of this video is whenever you're asked whether compound is a good leaving group. The first step is to replace whatever the alkyl group is and replace it with the hydrogen. So you essentially convert it into its analogous acid form. Now you ask, is this a strong acid? 
And the way you determine that is by looking at the pKa. So we see this guy has a very low pKa. And again, the lower the pKa, the stronger the acid. So now we know this guy is a very strong acid. So because it's a strong acid, it forms a very stable conjugate base. And again, we learned in the last video, this is a strong acid because it forms a conjugate, stable conjugate base. When this guy acts as an acid, when it protonates something and therefore acts as an acid and forms the conjugate base, it forms a very stable conjugate base. So therefore this guy doesn't mind acting as an acid because when it acts as an acid and protonates something, it forms a very stable, happy conjugate base. So it can act as an acid all day long. That's why it's a strong acid. So therefore, because this guy's a strong acid, we know it forms a very stable conjugate base. So therefore we know and we can determine that this compound is very stable. So therefore, because we know this compound is stable, we know this guy's stable because again, they're the same compound. And these guys are stable for all the same reasons. So now we know because this guy's stable, now we can infer that this guy's a good leaving group because when it acts as a leaving group, when we break this bond, these electrons fall on this guy and we form a leaving group, we form a stable leaving group. So therefore we know this guy's a good leaving group and it can act as a leaving group all day long because when it acts as a leaving group, it forms a very stable leaving group. It's very happy acting as a leaving group because it forms a very stable leaving group. So therefore this guy can act as a leaving group all day long. So what about this guy? Is this guy a stable leaving group? Well, again, we know the way we determine this. The first step is to replace the alkyl group with the hydrogen and to imagine this compound in its analogous acid form. And it doesn't matter what the alkyl group is because that's not the important part. So we just replace that with the hydrogen. The important part is the leaving group part. So, so, so that's the important part. So again, whenever you're asked, is a compound a good leaving group? Imagine it in its analogous acid form. And then the next step is you determine, is this guy a strong or weak acid? So you look at the pKa and we see this guy has an, an extremely high pKa. So therefore we know this guy's an extremely weak acid. Why is this guy such a weak acid? Well, when it acts as an acid and forms a conjugate base, it forms a very unstable conjugate base. So therefore this guy hates acting as an acid because when it acts as an acid, it forms a very unstable, unhappy conjugate base. So therefore this guy hates acting as an acid. So therefore it is a very weak acid because it, does, it doesn't like acting as an acid. So it's a very weak acid. So again, it forms a very unstable conjugate base. So therefore we know this compound is very unstable. So therefore this compound's unstable because they're the same compound and they're both unstable for the exact same reasons. So now, because we know this guy's unstable, we know this guy's unstable. So therefore, this guy's a bad leaving group. Because when this guy acts as a leaving group, when we break this bond and these electrons fall on this guy and we form this leaving group, we form an unstable leaving group. We form an unhappy leaving group. So therefore, this guy hates acting as a leaving group. That's why it's such a weak leaving group. That's why it's such a bad leaving group. Because when it acts as a leaving group, it forms a very unstable leaving group. So that's unfavorable. So again, that's the algorithm. Whenever you're asked if a compound is a good or bad leaving group, again, determine the analogous acid form, then determine the stability of the conjugate base, which will tell you the stability of the leaving group. So far in this video, we've been focusing on the leaving group and we've ignored the type of alkyl group we've left behind. However, this alkyl group is relevant. It's important. For example, when this guy acts as a leaving group, again, we break this bond, these electrons fall on this guy, and we form this very stable leaving group. So therefore, because this is a stable leaving group, we think we would do this reaction. However, the stability of the alkyl group that we leave behind is also relevant. For example, when this guy acts as a leaving group and we break this bond, these electrons fall on this guy and we form this leaving group, we know this is a very stable leaving group. However, what's important to realize is this is an extremely unstable carbocation. So again, when this guy acts as a leaving group, we leave behind a very unstable carbocation. So therefore, this reaction is unstable and unfavorable. So even though the leaving group that's formed is stable, the carbocation that's left behind is unstable, so therefore this reaction is not very likely, is not very favorable. However, this reaction, when this guy acts as a leaving group, we break this bond, these, guys, these electrons fall on this guy, we form a very stable leaving group. However, this carbocation is also relatively stable. It's a tertiary carbocation, so we know this is relatively stable, so therefore this reaction is more likely and more favorable.
So again, in the first video, we spoke about stabilities of carbocations. So again, I have a link of that video below. But again, this concludes my video on leaving groups. So the next video, we're going to talk about induction and resonance. And then the next video, we'll talk about melting points. And then that concludes my series on organic chemistry principles.